Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I install and prep and blend my Halo extension. You guys have seen it before. Sometimes I have really long, thick hair like this. Sometimes I don't, and that's because I have a Halo. So I choose when I get to put my extensions in. Halo Couture extensions are self-applied extensions, and they are held in by a wire. It's actually just a hand-tied weft extension. Just instead of it being sewn in, you apply it yourself every day with... A wire. They call it their miracle wire. It's essentially like a fishing line. So I am a distributor for Halo Couture and I distribute them to my clients as well for them to use them at home. I show you guys how to fit it to yourself. Now if you're a client of mine and you're just coming back from your fitting appointment, you've already gotten your Halo fitted by me, but I do recommend people fit it themselves at home. It's a whole different ball game when you get your hair done at the salon compared to when you go and you apply those tips and tricks for you at home. Definitely want to make sure that you refit your halo, make sure that it still fits in that same spot that I fitted you to. And if it doesn't, then now is the time to adjust it. If you are not a client of mine, but you have a halo couture extension though too, you probably got it fitted by another stylist. Like if you ordered a halo extension online, um, whether it was like from Amazon or from another extension distributor and you didn't go through a stylist, hopefully this kind of helps to give you some tips and tricks as well because I know that extensions can be kind of intimidating, especially when you're learning them all on your own. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, and if we like the Halo content, I would love to make some more, so just let me know. But other than that, let's go ahead and get on to the video. Alright, so first thing that I like to, I like to do is I like to get my natural hair I'd say like 80% style. What I mean by that is just making sure that one, you have like your part already placed and that your hair, your natural hair is like almost on board with whatever your halo is. Meaning, so my hair right now is just blown out a little bit. I actually, I washed it the other day. My halo is like a little bit of like just like a very loose wave. So I just need to make sure that my part is in and my hair has that like kind of like looser wave effect. What I then do is then I put my halo in and then I will go in and fine tune my natural hair and blend it into my halo and all that stuff then from there. Especially want to make sure that the underneath is all pretty much all good to go because then from there you can just blend it, tweak it. It's kind of hard, at least when you have short hair, shorter hair like mine and you're, you have a halo for a lot of length, it's a little bit harder to like get those like super tiny pieces in. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of get my natural hair styled really quick. All right, and now that you have everything like 80% of the way done, we're ready to put our halo in. Here is mine. For those wondering, this is a 22 inch layer that I cut to a 20 inch layered halo. Um, and then this is the color number three. But what I did to kind of customize it to myself was I gave myself a root. I'm naturally level three, so I did a level three root on it. And then um, I did all over, all over some low lights of um, 5AG. 5N and I think maybe some 5NB from Oligo Chlorogloss. It's just a super nice like chocolate brown melt that is supposed to be meant to customize with my own balayage I have going on. My balayage on my natural hair has warmed up just a little bit from it's like I did it gosh I did it over two months ago now at this point and I've maintenance it a little bit with blue shampoo but I haven't actually gone through and like retoned it since so this is going to be a little bit more of a neutral chocolate than like the pieces of my natural hair, but it all blends in when my halo's in, so I'm not too picky. I'm very, I'm like very low maintenance on my own hair. To have your halo ready to be installed, you just want to make sure that your wire is in and it's adjusted in the notch that you want it to be in. So at least with a halo couture halo, they have different notches. Depends on the halo, but there's anywhere between like four to six notches, I believe. But for all of them, the closer you are to the center, the uh, smaller the fit, so the smaller the head. So what you're gonna do is if this is your first time with a halo and you're not sure, the biggest thing is figuring out where does your halo like to sit out on your head. There's two different ways to put a halo in, and this first way that I'm gonna show you is not necessarily like my preferred way to apply it personally and I don't think any of my clients really like to use this as a way to apply their halo but I always show everybody and I'm going to show you today because it will help you figure out where 
you want your halo to sit at on your head. So with me and my clients, that's the first thing we do when your halo is here, when it's in the mail and it's all customized and it's all ready for you, is the first thing we actually do is I show you, you know, how to install the wire and everything. And then um, I show you how to get your hair prepped for an install, which is just what I did just now when I lightly styled mine. And now we're going to actually fit it to our head. So again, get your part in. After it's been detangled, and your wires in you want to make sure that it is close to the right setting that you believe it'll fit in as possible because when you wear it a little bit um, tighter it's gonna to want to go a little bit higher when you wear it a little bit more looser it's gonna to want to go a little bit lower on the head so just make sure that it's as close to it as possible if this is like your first few times with your halo you may have to go through and adjust it a few times and that's totally okay you're going to grab your halo I like to work back to front so what I do is I, I put one hand on top and then I put one hand on the bottom and I bring it all the way around and all I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my weft is touching my head and then I'm going to bring my wire as close up to my hairline as close as it wants to go and then I'm going to just let it fall flat just like this okay this is kind of where you'll feel like your halo wants to sit at on your head so as you can see on me mine kind of in the back in the back most it wants to sit a little bit right at that like bend of the head when you actually go through and pick the hair out it'll kind of start to like drop a little bit when you especially when you do it this way so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go in with the pick of my comb and i'm going to pick out every single hair that is laying on top of this halo and the quickest way to do this I tell my clients is to use your pick of the comb go right along the curvature of your head so you don't want to point it towards you you want to just glide it along and then the quickest way to do this is just to go from the, all the hair right on top of the wire because if you're just picking from let's say you can see right here if I'm picking all of this hair up right here there's still this slack right here that's left out so just do it to the best of your abilities and as you get all the hair moved out the halo naturally kind of starts to move down and then I'm going to go in with my brush and I'm just going to brush along again brush right along the wire the wire is super durable it is essentially a fishing, fishing line or fishing wire. So it's, again, very durable. I've never had anyone that has, that has had a halo or ha that's had a wire break from installing it. It's normally like a user error situation. So just keep brushing along the wire and along the weft again. The weft is even more durable. So as you guys see, I am brushing and I'm going along the head. My weft is laying right here. I don't know if you guys can see. Here's where my weft is laying at, and I'm brushing all the way down. And once when I hit the weft, then I kind of do a scooping motion or a C motion. I'm not necessarily brushing the halo, but I'm just brushing my natural hair along, along the weft. And then I'm brushing along the wire, and I'm brushing this off forward. And once when I feel like everything feels secure, here we go. So. This is a great way, again, to figure out where your halo naturally wants to lay on your head because it kind of, I feel like the halo kind of then tells you because again, when you just push it, put it all the way to the back of your head and you bring your wire up as comfortably as it wants to go, it kind of then doing it that way kind of says, I want to lay like in this spot. Now, if this feels comfortable to you and it doesn't feel too tight, doesn't feel too loose, doesn't feel like it's going to fall out, then setting wise on your notches, you're good. You don't need to go and make it tighter or looser or anything. If it feels like it's going to fall out or if it feels like it's loose, first, before you adjust your notches on your wire and on your halo, double check and make sure that it feels that it's secure in every spot by the hair when we are brushing it that is kind of a technique that i call like locking your halo in so let's say if it feels looser on like this right side what i like to do is i will lift the hair lift my hair up to find the weft and i'll see okay is there any hair that is laying where it shouldn't be and if there is then I just kind of keep brushing along there. See if that makes it feel better. And if it makes it feel better, you're obviously good. If not, then, you know, maybe and if it's and especially if it feels like it's just loose all over 
at that point you either really need to lock relock the hair in you really need to keep going in and just keep brushing it is kind of a tedious process especially when you put your halo in this way so you might just have to keep brushing it you might just have to keep locking it in um or if you do feel like especially i tell people like if you lean your head back like yes the halo is not attached to your head so you are going to feel it I kind of say it's going to glide with you. When I'm leaning my head back, my weft is still attached, like right along my scalp. If you lean your head back and your weft is drooping down and it's not as close to the scalp as possible, it needs tightened. <laughs> so use your best judgment. Um, with my clients, I try to kind of fit them there at that appointment so that you don't have to finagle with it too much at home. But that doesn't mean that you're not going to have any issues with it at home because everyone does things differently. I even have some clients that apply their halo a little bit differently because they than what I kind of show them because they learn that's what works best for them. So if that's you, you might have to put it in and it might want to sit differently depending on the way that you're putting it in compared to how I do it. I always tell everybody, I'm going to show you the way that I have learned and I have the most success with doing it on me and on my clients, but that doesn't limit you to you have to do it that way. So once when this feels all nice and secure and you know you can continue styling your hair then you'd be all good to go. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys a way quicker way to apply your halo. Um, once when you have an idea of where it wants to lay out so once you have it properly fitted and you know where the weft wants to lay out you know what feels the most comfortable to you you know where your wire wants to sit at um, and you're comfortable with it you're comfortable with putting in your halo all that stuff. We're actually just going to pre-section out that crown area. It doesn't need to be perfect. I will show you how to fine tune it. I have to fine tune mine almost every time I do it too. Um, but this just kind of helps to get that hair out of the way so you're not picking out as much. So in my opinion and in my experience, I get my halo applied the quickest this way. Um, I also feel like this feels the most comfortable because I'm not picking out so many hairs so there's less hair that I have to work with with picking it out. Um, and a lot of my clients kind of agree too. What we're going to do is you still want to make sure that your hair is 80% styled and you want to make sure your part's in. So here it is. It's almost ready to go. And then I'm going to go back. I tell everybody you're going to go back like one to three inches away from the hairline depending on where your, it depends on your head shape and where your halo wants to sit at. Most people's halos want to sit right at that bend of the hair where it starts. So if you see my hairline starts right here and everything is kind of starting to go like downwards but as I go back a little bit this is kind of where it starts my head starts to bend that's a good spot of where your halo likes to sit at so what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate that out and I'm going to bring out the rest of my crown just like this and again, it doesn't need, as long as you're getting a lot of the hair up, it's a lot easier to worry about this to pick out than to worry about all of this. But if you do want to make it as perfect as possible, most halos, again, like to sit at the bend of the head. So you can kind of just like feel around on your head. My bend of the head kind of goes right around here. So again, if you're wanting to be as accurate as possible, try to get that bend of the hair out of the way as well. For me, on a day-to-day -day basis, I'll be honest with you though, I just kind of go back one to three inches from my hairline, so I kind of like to get, you know, this area out of the way. And then I just kind of get my crown area up. Again, get your halo ready, so I'm going to detangle it. And it's the same type of application in the sense that you're going to bring your halo all the way back and around put it on two sides i like to kind of have the thumb on bottom and like my four fingers on top but that's just me it's kind of whatever everyone prefers and then once when your halo has met the back of your head so once it's met the back of the head right here i just like to inch my wire as close up as it will comfortably go again if you mismeasured up here don't force it to go where you measured it at just have it go where it wants to lay once when you're good, I like to bring this hair up front and drop it. And then if I feel like the wire is like out of place, I'll kind of just like reposition it. But you don't want to mess with your wire too much. Let's say if yours is all the way back here, your sectioning is all the way back here, your halo wants to lay up here, you can take it out and resection it. You know, it's a, it's a learning experience. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with my wire again, and I'm going to go a, I'm going to go right along the top of the weft. And I'm just going to use my pick and pick any hair out. And even if you don't see hair, I kind of like to just go along 
everything because even if you don't see, there might be still be a few hairs laying. Like all of this is up, so I'm good here. So really, it's just some hairs on the side. And then what I do from here is I go back in with my brush and I just the same scooping motion. I just brush and brush along the sides. And now I'm ready to take my clip out. And then from here, I kind of just start to lay the hair where it wants to go. And then I use my brush and I'm going to brush along the wire all over my head. And what I do in the front to really hide that wire, I just kind of shimmy it down. I shimmy it to my, I shimmy the hair to the side, shimmy it to the other side. You can brush along the front and to the sides. The one place I recommend not to brush your hair is to the back because in case if the wire does get picked up, you will likely have to re-up. You might be able to fix it. I've done it before on accident and you might be able to fix it, but you might have to reapply your halo again. Now what I'm doing is I'm using my brush or I'm using my comb and I'm mainly just focusing it along the front part of my head. This really helps to fine tune anything. And then from there, and that's it. Like once you have it, once you have it down, you can get, get this applied in under 30 seconds. And I haven't even gone through and done any added blending or anything in it and styling and it's already blending super, super well. So for short hair to long hair blending, there is a few, a few different tips and tricks that you can do. One thing that people struggle with, with all types of extensions when they're having shorter hair is if you have these short guys at the nape of your neck. One thing that you can do is if you don't really wanna mess with them, here's the good thing, you don't have to. What you can kind of do is when you go to section out your halo, when you go to section out your crown area, what you can do is you can tie all of that up into a little ponytail. We're gonna pretend like this is like a ponytail or a bobby pin or something too. What you can also do too though, if you don't wanna do it beforehand, if you wanna wait till after, and grab on this side. Just make sure you're not grabbing anything in the left. You could totally do it this way. The only thing is, it's a little bit harder, it's a little messier, just because you're messing with your halo and with it too. And then when you bring this forward, you don't have to worry about it. You just have to worry about the hair on your sides. That's definitely an option. When my hair was a little bit shorter, my hair was kind of like stuck at like the collarbone area for a minute. When my hair is at its collarbone, sometimes I would do that if it just if I just wasn't having it. Um, if you want to wear your hair a little straight, sometimes that's a good option as well. Also, if you don't want to do that, or if it's if your hair is too long to do it that way, or you just don't want to, here are a few things that you can do. So one thing is you can grab your natural hair and a section of your halo. So just the section that lives the closest to it and just style them together. And a big thing that you can do, and you don't have to, don't do anything extra. Don't like just literally just grab it and we're gonna just curl it all together like we would if they were, if it was all natural hair. That's like the biggest thing I tell people is like just treat your halo and your natural hair, treat it like, pretend like they're all like together, you know, pretend like they all live on the head normally. And see that already just blends in just fine. Another thing that you can do is over here, so this is just falling a little bit more straight and right now since it's waved, you just kind of want to give it a little bit more of a bend. So what I'll do sometimes, I'll just pick up just this natural hair and just go back through and just re-bend it a little bit, hold it for a few seconds and let it out. And wait until it kind of starts to blend in well. And then see now the issue is, and this is kind of why I prefer to just kind of curl it together because now this is bent, but then this piece is a little bit straight, which is fine. Again, it's whatever works best for you. What works best for me most of the time is just combining everything together. But now I'm just going to go through and just curl this really quick. Those are two things you can do. For these sides, it's the same, pretty much the same concept too. Um, 
Another thing is when you, so when you're wearing your hair straight, I know my halo today is curly, so that doesn't really help. But let's say if it is straight, one thing you can do is if they're sticking out, again, you can definitely tie your underneath, that nape area, you can tie that up. Um, another thing you can do and what I've always done is if this like little short hair is sticking out, you can easily, and we're going to have to visualize here because my hair is not straight, I'm sorry. But you can easily just slightly bevel your curling iron under just a little bit to kind of help it to like lay into the hair a little bit smoother. You can easily just straighten your natural hair with your halo, so just combine them together and just slightly bevel it when you go to straighten it too. And I know that sounds really weird, especially if you're wanting to wear it stick straight, but if you think about it, when we wear our hair straight, it goes with the curvature of the head until the ends lay. The ends do lay straight. And yes, this is all straight too, but if this all laid super straight right here, it would stick out like this. So you want to kind of curl everything under, again, just the slightest. You don't want to do, unless if you're styling your hair like that, like blowout bouncy curl, if you're just wanting it all to like lay stick straight, you don't want to bevel it under too much, but if you do slightly bevel it just a little bit, it's going to help it mold into the halo and then everything will kind of all like mesh together. And then lastly, one of my biggest, biggest little, little tricks is pick up. So we're going to go through and grab your halo and you're going to grab it from like a few inches below and you're just going to lightly backcomb it into the natural hair and that kind of helps to push the halo into your natural hair and it kind of just again helps them like mold and marry together a little bit and look at the extra volume it gives you like it's... other than that guys i think that is it so hope you guys enjoy i really hope you learned something new i hope this helped um if you guys have any questions leave them in the comments below i can definitely do more blending videos for you guys also and yeah, I think that's it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.